So last time I went, and it was quickly at the end of class, but we basically went over kind of motivation uh, for the mathematics behind finite element formulations, and we talked a little bit about the calculus of variations, and specifically kind of the minimization of an integral. So if, if I give you a function that looks like this, And I want to minimize this guy, so I want to minimize it. Subject to u at 0 equal to 0. Well, how would I do that? So we want to minimize an integral. And last time, we showed that you can take that the, an integral, a functional, has a stationary value or a minimum at when its first variation is equal to zero. Okay. So if I take the first variation of this guy, That equals to, remember I said that, you know, the, the del operator works just like the differential operator in that I can, just, I can just bring it inside the integral as long as the integral is over a fixed domain. And here, I've just used a little trick. So every, I mean, this is obvious that this term is EA over 2 partial U, or differential U. It's not, there's no time dependence here, so let's write it. DU DX, DU DX, right? And so you might, write this as a function that's one-half u, u, right? Because it's, it's some, so the, this is a symmetric, it's symmetric in its arguments, right? I can replace u with u and I get the same function, right? Or I could place u with v and it doesn't matter, right? One, one of the u's could be v and I'd still have the same function because the order of differentiation doesn't matter. I get a lot of, I'm getting a lot of blank looks. Let me, let me just write it out. So if I write, would everybody agree that if I write this, that it's exactly the same thing as writing this? Right? So therefore, it's, it's symmetric in its arguments. I can, I can swap the arguments, right? So if I have a symmetric function, eh, it turns out that, and we'll learn, we'll, not only is it symmetric, it's also called something bilinear. Um, we'll learn really soon that if you have a function that's symmetric in its arguments, that you can replace it by one half so these two things are equivalent, exploiting the symmetry. And that's what I'm doing here. Basically, if you just replace, 
So if you notice when I wrote this term out here, there's no one half, it's gone. And it's because, and I replaced V with del U, but nevertheless, it's exploiting this identity. And we'll, we'll learn more about bilinear operators shortly. And I think it'll, it'll be more clear, all right? But nevertheless, we have this, okay? And for this to have a stationary value, it must be equal to zero. So we're going to use that integration by parts identity on this first term, okay? And so then we have So, so I just did that integration by parts identity on the first term to shift the differentiation off of that del u. I want to shift it off, okay? Of course, there's some boundary of terms that come into play. And so the whole expression, we have to include those. That is equal to The whole thing has to equal zero. Well, so all I did in the, in the step from here to here was I expanded this term, right? And then combined it with the P on the, on the L. And so I just evaluated this at L, right? And this last term that results has this del U at zero. Well, if we, in, if we interpret this as a variation, the variation has to be consistent with the constraints of the system. So while the variation can be arbitrary along the path, it can't be arbitrary where the boundaries are specified. And you notice that up here I said minimize it with respect to this. So u at zero has to be equal to zero. It, it, the little variation can't be arbitrary at u equals zero, okay? So in this case, this is zero. And what we're left with is this. And so for arbitrary del u, we have 
that. Well, does that look familiar? We derived that last time as the differential equation for this system, right? Right? It's just when we did it last time, I showed you that picture. We took a little slice out of it and wrote the and wrote down the F equals MA, right? This time I gave you a function, more specifically a quadratic function, and we minimized it and we got the differential equation of motion. And it's because that the function that we started with is actually a statement of the potential energy for this system. So the minimization of the potential energy leads to the differential equation of motion. And we could have arrived at this now, we could have arrived at this directly by employing those uh, so-called Euler-Lagrange equations that we derived, la well, they were in the notes, the calculus of variations notes, you can go back and look at them, but it was like partial F partial U minus partial partial X partial F partial U prime equal to zero. Well, if you look at this, it, it'll directly, if you just apply, if you, if this is F, the integrand, and then you just apply this, it, it directly leads to this equation. So again, what's important to take from this is that the minimization of the potential energy leads to the differential equation. And so really, one implies the other. And it doesn't really matter which way you go. Now one thing you'll notice here is that this term, last time we wrote it as a boundary condition. And it is a boundary condition, right? It's that the derivative with respect to u at L times the rigidity, Ea, <clears throat> has to equal to the force applied. But you'll notice that it actually shows up in this, what we call variational principle, right? It shows up naturally in the variational principle. And I used a specific word there naturally. So this guy is called a natural boundary condition because it naturally shows up in the variational principle. Right? This one, the other one, is called an essential boundary condition. And you'll hear other terms in the literature, sometimes they're sort of used interchangeably. Natural boundary conditions or Neumann boundary conditions. And essential boundary conditions are called Dirichlet boundary conditions. So you've probably seen that already in the literature if you've read papers on finite elements or something like that. <clears throat> it took me a long time to associate, you know, I could never, for a long time I could never remember which one was which. Especially, I always knew natural and essential. You know, it, in my head I could always, natural because it appears naturally in the variational form. But when I would see Neumann and Dirichlet, it took me a long time to remember which one was which, and then I had a student in my office one day, and, and she 
I was explaining it to her, and she just kind of blurted out loud some word association, and she, she recognized that natural and Neumann, they both start with N, right? So you can remember that, natural Neumann, than, than the other one's essential virtually, right? Especially in the mathematical literature, they'll, they'll always, almost always they'll say Neumann and Dirichlet as opposed to natural and essential. 